everyone, it's Mandy from Imagination Crafts. And welcome to my Sunday night uh, Facebook Live um, with my using all my Imagination Craft goodies. I hope you're going to enjoy this. Now tonight we're going to do a project that's been asked by one of our lovely viewers again. She wanted me to go back to a project I did on Hochanda a while back when we did a peeled paint background effect. So that's what I'm going to try and create for you today. Okay, so what I thought I'd do first of all, show you the original piece. Okay, um, I've got a new camera stand by the way. <laughs> Uh, a new thing for my camera, so hopefully this week we'll do okay. <laughs> Not last week was awful start to it, so I hope it's better this time. So let me just show you what we're doing, uh, working from the original one. Hi Emma. So what I'm going to do, this is the original one, hey Ali, that I did for the show. So we're creating this, I'm going to put it up to the camera so you can see it properly. Can you see this chipped paint peeled effect? And I'm going to tilt it this way, okay. Hiya Leslie, hiya Margaret, how are you my lovely? Can you see the texture here? And this is the texture we're going to create today. And this is how we're going to get our chipped and peeled paint effect. So we'll be using our gorgeous soft blend fabric acrylic paints actually, because you can use them on so much more than just your fabrics. They go on beautifully onto canvas, they blend beautifully onto this wood. Lots we can do with them. So we can use them for our, um, our top colors. We're also going to be using our gorgeous starlight texture paste. Now you've seen me use this before, but I absolutely love this product because it's so rich in, in the starlight paint. So it's actually a starlight paint base with real crystals in it. And that's what gives it that gorgeous texture and that gorgeous relief on your projects. And we're gonna use that to our benefit today to be able to chip into it to give us this effect, okay? So we're using that as well. We'll be doing a resist technique in the background and we'll be using our waxes. And I've got some beautiful little pieces that I've already done, pre-done for you in the rice paper. So if I show you what we're going to be doing today, okay. Um, oh, before I go, I've got a giveaway. I forgot about that. I've got some gorgeous little giveaway for you today. So I'm going to try, oh, there they are. Sorry. <laughs> Ta-da! So I have picked my favourite two stamps in our texture um, range, texture backgrounds. So these are called Rockfall and Reflection. They're a lovely, beautiful um, polymer stamp, lovely and deep. That's what we like about our stamps. They are nice and deep and they self cling, beautiful. So these, you've got a couple, um, if I hold one at a time for you. So these, are gonna, I'm just gonna do a random thing through the comments at the end, and whoever I land on will get sent these, okay? So we've got some gorgeous stamps here. This one here is a beautiful reflection, or it could be drops of paint as well. And on this one here, if you wanna get a moonlight reflection, this stamp here, sorry about the light in there, is absolutely beautiful to just to get a reflection on there. We've got some gorgeous sort of bubble effects on this one, the two different sizes there. We've got some peel, it's like a peel paint effect. You could stamp this peel paint effect with that one as well. And on this one here, this stamp here is what I use all the time. And it's like mini mini bricks, like a, like a driveway in your house really. So it's lovely. So they will be given away randomly from whoever comments tonight in the, in the Facebook Live, okay? So lovely, freebie, yay! <laughs> we like a freebie. So let me show you. Hi Emma, how are you my lovely? So I'm gonna show you tonight what we're actually working on. So you may have seen this as a sneak peek as well already. Okay, so we're gonna be working on this. So we've got, I've gone very vintage and very pretty for you. I know I don't often do the pretty bit, <laughs> but I do. I mean, I just put makeup on for you tonight. I'm not sure I look more like Coco the Clown than Coco Chanel, but <laughs> at least I make the effort. <laughs> Okay, so we've got this beautiful chip paint effect again. We've got some gorgeous stencil work in the background. We're using our waxes. We're using our gorgeous starlight texture paste. Again, and there's just a few elements I've already pre-done. I've got some lovely die cuts that I've used from the Crafters Companion range, which I will show you what I've done with those. But again, beautiful, using your rice paper to create your embellishments. Gorgeous, okay? So this is how you can use all your scraps up. Hiya, Deborah. Okay, <laughs> if I could, I would, my lovely, but you may, but you never know, okay? So we're going to start, and I'm going to take you step by step. So this is a nice, easy tutorial, but you can play with it and work it to what you want it to be, okay? So I'm going to, as normal, okay? Hi, Tori. So I'm going to start our step by step. So you know what's coming. <laughs> see us on, because I can't see anything without them. And I'm going to put the camera down, and let's get started, okay? So bear with me two seconds. I'm getting the camera down. There you go. All right. Let me just swipe that so I can see what I'm doing. There you go. I'm sorry if you've seen these here, it's just a feet of my camera, um, camera tripod, because I've swapped that rather than what I had before. Okay. So I'm going to take you step by step through the stages. You're going to see me use um, lots of um, different 
size um, canvases. And I'm sorry for the shadow because it's a different stand to what I normally use. So I'm just going to take you there. So excuse the different size canvases, but I'm using what I've got in the house available with me today, okay? So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to try to get you on my other page so I can see your comments as we go along. Bear with. Right, there we go. Hopefully I'll be able to see your comments then. Okay, right then. I will try and answer as we go along, but you know what I'm like. I'm not very good at being able to do two things at once, okay? <laughs> I'm not very good at multitasking, I'm afraid. I either craft or I, or I answer comments. <laughs> but I will try, honestly, I will try. So, here we are. I've just got one of the a little canvas here. And then what I'm going to do, first of all, is I'm going to take my soft blend paint, and I'm using the Mulberry Purple um, on this occasion for the background. The reason why I'm using this colour is we want a nice dark background so that when we chip away into the paint, you're going to be able to see the chip paint look through those layers because we've got about three different layers going on on our project. So I'm just going to pop some paint onto my um, plate here, I'm trying to keep as tidy as I can for you. It doesn't normally work very well, does it? So I've got my paint here, but I wanted to show you how beautifully soft these blend onto your canvases but don't forget these are a textile paint so these can paint onto your bags onto your clothes they go onto your leather they go onto all sorts so these are a textile paint okay so these will so dry there we go once you're dried and you've heat set them from the from the rear these are now become machine washable okay I just want to show you how beautifully soft they blend. And this is onto your canvas. So you imagine onto your fabrics as well, okay? So there you go, beautifully soft, blended onto that canvas. So what we're gonna do next, we're gonna put that to one side and we're going to let that dry for the next stage. Now, if I bring in the one I've already done, okay, the a size. <laughs> Sorry about this, but I said, I'm going what I've got. So this one now I have painted, okay, and dried. The next stage, we need to put a resist on the background of this. And what happens, the resist will make it nice and easy for us to rub back the paint to get the um, peeled paint effect, or worn wood. You can do it two ways for this. If I do it at this stage and then just paint over it, you're gonna get a worn um, wood effect. But we're doing another stage on, we're gonna get a chipped paint effect. So you're gonna get two out of this, this look. So I've just got some hair mud here, hair wax. You can use Vaseline. You can use um, a candle, but I like, I prefer the wax, um, the hair wax and hair mud because where I put it, it stays. Um, I find with the Vaseline sometimes it may move as I put my paint on top. That's why I like to do to the wax. So I'm just using a brush and what I'm going to do then, and yes, I got to say, I had a story about this before. I went to Hochanda and my husband came and helped me one day and um, he recognised the wax. <laughs> Is his hair is his hair mud, but as it was in the cupboard that he wasn't using it that day, I got it now. So and I haven't replaced it either. You know, he hasn't got a lot of hair, so why does he need so much wax? That was my that was my argument. <laughs> He's getting old now. So what I'm going to do now? I'm just painting the wax on. So just paint it on wherever you want the resist. I tend to paint it all over really, and then I'll add extra. You can see because it actually clings to the canvas and it stay put while I'm putting the paint on it. Okay, so I'm just going to pop this on. I'm putting a bit all over. Okay, because then if I decide to have the resist there, I've got it. But what it will do is I tend to put extra around my edges because I always think that's where it's going to tarnish more. Okay. And I'm going to be waxing these edges as well. Okay, afterwards. So we popped our wax on. Okay, just pop that to one side. Hi Moira. <laughs> hi Alison, hi Erica, thanks for joining me. It's a gorgeous colour, isn't it Erica? I absolutely love this colour. So now we pop that wax on. I don't need to let my wax dry because it stays more or less in place where I pop when I put it. So what we're going to do next is we're going to bring in my gorgeous um, Starlight Texture Paste. Okay. This is, like I said, a really gorgeous, sumptuous colour. The paste is brilliant to work with, but it is, and we've used this before, it is a thick paste. Okay, look at that, it's a thick paste, but it's got the starlight base, we've got that gorgeous gold starlight paint, and then it's packed full of real crystals, and that's what gives us our texture with it. But what I thought we'd do first is, 
Now with this, I want some, maybe some gold in the background. So I'm just taking it on my brush, a little bit on my brush. And where I want maybe some gold as a gold paint, can you see I'm just gonna use this as a paint and then I'll go back in with my texture, okay? So I'm just using this purely as the paint part of the um, paste now, okay? Okay, so that's just gone on like a paint. Then what I want to do, I'm gonna pop that into water, is I'm going to put the paste on, and this is where I'm creating our texture. So I'm putting this on in the areas, okay, that I want sort of get my peeled paint look, because we're gonna be chipping away at this once it's dry and painted. Okay, let me just turn that around so I can get that way. Okay, so I'm leaving it quite thick. You think I'm using a lot, I'm not actually using that much, okay? But what I'm doing is I'm putting into sort of dense into the areas. I like some at the top as well. Because we're gonna be using this, we wanna chip into this and chip it away, okay? So, there you go. So I'm just gonna pop that there, okay? So, wherever you want it, you want a layer of good thickness of the paste there, pop that into the water, okay? Then once that is dry, okay, and it has to be dry, you're gonna let that dry, Okay, um, it dries actually dries pretty quick for a paste because it's mostly starlight based and it's got crystals in it. The starlight part of it dries quite quickly. It all depends how thick you put it on. This probably, I, mean, I did it earlier on, and it's going to take about half hour to dry, ready for your next coat. Um, it's dry enough after half hour to do the next layer of what we're going to do. Okay, so I'm going to pop that again to one side. Bring in the one. Like that. I've already done. I've got a piece of card there, make you see so you can see the, the um, paste easier. Okay, so here I have one here that I've done earlier. I don't know if you can see how well you can see. This paste now is dry, so I've got some texture to chip away at. But also you can see there's wax in the in the background as well from where we put our first layer. If I can show you, it's where we put our first layer. What I'm going to do now, though, before I do the next layer, is I'm putting more wax on. This now acts to resist to our next coat. So we've got to resist here from our original base. And then we're going to put more wax on now and that is going to give us a resist to our next layer because we're going to be adding paint on top of this okay so again i'm just going over with the brush okay and i'm just popping that paste wherever i want it to be okay again because we're resisting because i've put another we'll put another layer of paint on and i want to make sure that i can get that paint off okay I'm just going to pop that all over. Okay, so you pop that all over where you want the resist to be. Okay. Then if you're using a more liquidy one, give it time to um, settle down. So with this one, I just paint straight on top of it. So what we're going to do next is I'm going to get out some of the lines of water. Just swapping my plates around two seconds. So next colour I'm going to use, I'm going to be using our Ashy Rose. A gorgeous soft vintage color. Look at that, it's gorgeous soft vintage. Again, remember these are fabric paints as well. And I'm going to use our basic there white. So also black and white, you always have in all your paints <laughs> or your pearl or your potted cream in the, in the starlights. There you go. Okay, so I'm going to pop some of the ashy rose to my plate and I'm going to pop on some of the white as well. So what we're going to do is we're going to blend these on the canvas. Okay, so I have got the ashy rose and I have the white. So I'm just going to take a brush now, okay, and I'm just going to start painting over our canvas. It's up to you what sort of blend, what sort of colour you want. You know, I went slightly darker on the sample I'm going to show you now slightly lighter on my original one it's up to you but I always blend my paint on my canvas you know it's not being lazy it's just I just the way I always tend to do it okay there we go put some more of the pink in I love this sort of vintagey look we're going to get from this isn't it there we go pop some more on there hey Celia how are you Yes, Celia, they are, they are the fabric paints, but I'm just showing you can use them on many surfaces. I've done them on the clocks before, onto wood, onto MDF, as well as my, as well as the fabrics. I just like them because they're nice and they're easy to blend. 
okay and they give you they do give you a really really soft finish to your to your projects okay so that's what we've done now so you're going to let that dry okay hello sue <laughs> glad you're here can help me answer any questions <laughs> i'll make you work in sunday evening <laughs> Okay, so we're going to put that aside. We're going to let that dry. Okay. There we go. Let me just move that out of the way. I don't think we need that now. So here is the one we're going to actually working on. So let me just recap what we've done for anyone who's missed it. So what we've done first of all is we painted our background with our mulberry purple and our soft blend paint. Then we're going to let that dry. Then what we did is we took our wax and we painted a layer of the wax to re um, act as our resist for our first layer. Then you're gonna pop that, our starlight texture paste goes on next once that's you waxed it. And when this is dry, we added another layer of wax on to carry on with our um, creating our resist techniques. Okay, and then all I've done now is I've painted over the top um, with the Ashy Rose and the white soft blend fabric paints to get our background. Okay, now comes the fun bit. This is where we're going to take that chipped paint away. Chipped paint look for you. So, just make sure my brushes are in water because I want them to dry. Okay. So, I'm going to take my spatula. If you need a spatula, you need a craft knife. Just be careful. You don't want to take all the paint away that we've um, um, put it all down on there. Are you Victoria, my lovely? How are you? So, what you're going to do now is where we want to add, take our peeled paint effect, we are going to chip away and because we put our resist underneath can you see it's going to start acting and making it nice and we can just take this paint off okay so we're just gonna hack into it really a couple of minutes there you go okay so we're just taking off areas and we want to take some of that chipped paint and you can see you can see some of my gold coming underneath there I've left. So we're just literally going to hack areas off. Sorry about the noise. Okay, depends how chipped you want it to look. Okay, you can take your time doing this. I just always hack it in because I'm that's the way I that's the way I craft. I'm afraid. <laughs> um, Amanda, you you yeah. As long as the waxy finish, yes, you could use clear boot polish. I haven't tried it, but there's no reason why because it will actually resist because it's gonna it's gonna whack as long as it's a wax base. So I can't see that. Yes, man, I think I'd be fine. There we go. Okay. And I'm going to hack down here, more here. Oh, there we go. There we go. Oh, this will be on my carpet in a minute. So we're gonna hack away. There we go. So we are just taking some of our texture away. We don't want to take all the texture off. Okay, so we're doing our, can you see how it's coming on? Do a bit more here. And then I've got my, what I call my paint mate in my, on my lap to do the next bit, okay? There you go. So you just hack in the way, peel it off where you want it to show. Okay, now I know my elements go in here, so I want to take a bit more down here. Okay, so let me just put that to one side, put it on my carpet. <laughs> So right, we'll hoover off after. Let me just clear that mess away. Okay. So we've hacked away to create our chipped paint effect. Okay. What I'll also do, if you want to do a worn wood effect, it's what I call my paint mate, they're all my dirty my, my cloths I wash every week. <laughs> so then where we've got the resist on the sides, I am just taking a cloth and rubbing. And where we've got that wax underneath, that created our resist, which means then we can rub it off wherever we want to rub it off okay you could do this with a little bit of sandpaper but I just find because of the wax is there a piece of toweling cloth or um, a really tough kitchen roll is just as good because I find sometimes you can take too much off when you use um, sandpaper but again it's all preference is yours whatever you like to do if you want a heavier look then use sandpaper Okay, so I'm just going to go around the edges here. You can see how where the where you put the resist, how it's coming off. Okay, there we go. I told you it was easy. 
So just dust that off. There you go. So we've got our background all ready to go now. Okay. So there we've got our, sorry about that crisscross there, go that way. So there we've got our lovely peel paint effect. Really easy to do. Okay. And then what we can do, start doing now is we can start adding my stenciling in. Okay, so I've got this gorgeous um, trellis stencil, A4 stencil, that I'm going to use over the top. It's one of my go-to background stencils. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to pop that onto the canvas. I'm going to grab some of the white paints. I've got a little bit left there. Okay, and I'm going to grab a stencil brush. You can use a um, cut and dry or ink blending tool. This is just what I have um, with me at the moment. So I'm softening it off because I don't want it, I want to ghost it more than have a definite pattern going on. So I'm just going to randomly, because I know my embellishment's going down here, so I'm just randomly adding some uh, detail to this side. And I'm just literally a tiny bit of paint, it doesn't take a lot. Okay. When I lift this up now, you can see how it's coming on there. Okay, and then I'm just gonna soften, soften the edges out because I don't want to, I wanted the texture there, but I'm just gonna soften those edges out on this bit here because I'm going out towards the edges. Okay. So if I take that stencil away, okay, you can see how beautiful that stencil looks. So now our feature is going to be here and here, okay. So again, you can do it as light or as dark as you want. Pop that into the water again. So we've done our background stencil here, okay. Then what I like to do is I like to, I'm going to actually add my wax on here at the moment while there's nothing in the way for me to do it. So I'm using, hi Brenda my alchemy wax and my inca gold i'm taking some i'm dispensing it onto my mat out of my pot keep your things out of the pot if you can okay hi Elin. thank you oh thank you the colors are lovely but it's, it's just blending the paints the paints do they blend beautifully together they really do so i've got my wax now here and i've got a damp baby wipe because that baby wipe will help your product spread easier on these and it helps it go further. We all like something that's gonna go a long way, don't we? So I'm just gonna pop that around go, my edges. There we go. I've got one bent corner, I, I dropped it. <laughs> I don't know how, I'm always dropping stuff. I don't know what I do half the time with them. So there we go, okay. So I'm gonna bump that on there. Again, I always bring a little bit into the corner. I just think it draws the eye in. Again, it's your project. You'll do whatever your favourite thing is to do on these edges. Okay. So we're just going to whack that round there. And get onto some decorating. Okay. So, there we go. So very, very quick. Very easy to do. Okay. So we've added our wax on. So we're, we're starting to build our designs up there. I'm just going to, anything that's wet, it's gonna go back in my pot. We don't like to waste anything. There you go. Okay, you wipe that up. I'm trying to keep clean for you again today. She says, well, she's got paint everywhere on the side of my table. There we go, okay. So we've done our waxing now. There we go. So what we're going to do next, apart from me get paint off my hands, <laughs> and I'm going to show you how we created the elements to go on. Okay, so this is what we're making. So we're going to, I'm going to show you the, the elements now just very, very quickly. You know, I don't want to teach you grand suck eggs or anything on this, but just to show you how it came together. Okay, so let me pop that to one side, sorry. So I've used, taken, um, let's get my pieces together for you. I'm very organised today, really, honest, <laughs> she said. So I've taken, I've gone through, I mean, I keep every bit of rice paper, and I'm sure we all do, and we, Sue always says, keep every little bit, because you never know when you're going to be needing it, okay. So there's a little piece I had left from another project. So I had 
two little bits left. I'd use the rest of the sheets, but I'd kept, I'd kept the birds. So all I've done here is I've used our um, fabric decoupage glue and I popped that onto some cardstock and I've just die cut an oval. Simple as that, that's all I've done on that one, okay? What I've also done is I took an oval, um, slightly bigger, and I've die cut, that, um, die cut it and I've painted it then with our mulberry purple, okay? That's my finger spot where I held it still when I was painting it because you're not going to see that, okay? So, and then all I've done is I've added, <laughs> it's messy, isn't it? I've added um, some lace I have in my stash and I've used um, chipboard to act as my um, razor on there. So all I'm going to do with that, I'm going to move that to one side. Okay, so I'm going to pop on some of my Magibond. So I'm using my Magibond glue, which is really, oops, she says, oh, you're dropping everything. This is a really, really good bond glue. It's a fabulous bond on it. Okay, I think I'll do it that way up. So I'm just adding that on. Okay. There we go. Just to give you the idea. Now, this lace for me is too white. Okay, that's just me though, personally. So all I've done on the other one then is I have taken um, a brush, a little bit of my wax, and I have just literally gone over the edge of my lace with my starlight wax to um, really make it look a bit more vintage looking. So that's all I've done. Is I've taken the wax and brushed it across the top of my lace just to take that whiteness off it because I think in this project it was just too white. Okay. All right. And then you can also, if you want to, just brush it around the edge of your oval. Did it pick up any detail there for you? Okay. So that's all I've done there. As you can see I've now dulled down the white using our the um, alchemy wax. So another way you can you can use it. Okay, so that's our topper, our main topper done. So it's really, tell you, really, really simple. Now to create um, our swirls, I've used beautiful, as you can see, one of my favourites again, get this card back in so you can see them properly, my gorgeous magic cuts. Okay, so I've used those and all I've done with those again, if I just move that to one side, I will show you. I've taken the mulberry, um, mulberry purple, which I've still got some here, okay. So I've taken the mulberry purple and my brush, and what I've done then is I've pounced my colour on to colour my, there we go, to colour my magic cuts, okay. So lovely, really easy to apply. So they go on all sorts, and these Magic Cuts are brilliant because they take all sorts of media on there. They take your paints, they take your paste, they take um, heat embossing, and they don't fall apart or disintegrate. No matter how many layers, you can put loads of layers on, and they're brilliant, okay. So what happened there, when that was dry then, what I'd done was, I'd just taken again my wax, okay, and I've just gone over, if I want to add, finish this one, I've literally just gone over with a paintbrush over the top. So though I've still got a mulberry shining through from the underlying layers, I have highlighted it, but you still get that glorious colour. I just want to put one more layer of colour on here. So we're bringing out the, and I've done it, I've actually, the, the Magic Cuts, you can see them actually, they've got a texture to them. And it's like a bit like watercolour card when you get out of stippling. So when you put your waxes on, it really picks up all that gorgeous texture of the, of the, um, velvet board underneath and it really does look super when it's done okay so we've got our um magic cuts and what i've done on the back is i've cut out some um little chipboard pieces from scrap and added them on to give them a lift from the back so they're just chipboard scraps i had on the back to add act as my foam pads i suppose really okay so what i'm going to do is i'm going to pop these on and i can show you the flowers then so I'm going to pop that down just about there, okay. It will grab when it's, when it's dry. I might have to put a bit of glue gel just for now. It will, it will grab, but I'm trying to do it so you can, I can lift it up to show you afterwards, okay. So I'm going to pop some glue gel on it just for now. And I just hold it in place while the glue's drying. There we go, okay. So then I'm just going to pop a little bit of glue 
on the back of my magic cups on the bits I've risen there okay and that glue does dry clear right. I'm just going to pop them where I fancy there so it's coming together quite easily I love I just I really love these magic cups yeah. and the waxes look marvelous on so I'm just going to pop that under there so we've got our, it's coming together now. So let me pop that around that way so far. So that's what we've got so far. Okay. Are you Jennifer? Did you find it? <laughs> she lost the stamping mat. She couldn't find it. So we've done our basic there. Now to create our embellishments, what I've done is I have used scraps, literally. I'm going to show you because there's not any scraps left now. I have. I had some scrap um, rice papers and all I've done is stuck, I stuck them onto a piece of uh, lightweight cardstock. I mean, you could use photocopy paper, it depends how much shaping you want to do in your flowers. If you want to do a lot of shaping, then I'd say cut them onto a, um, a lighter weight paper, something like um, uh, a 120 GSM paper, something like that, okay. Uh, and then I have used the die cut strips from the Desire range. So these are the Shabby Rose Duo. And I've used those as two as large and the small to create my embellishments, which I'll show you now. So all I've done was I stuck the paper down and then I've just put the strip and just run it through as many times as I can get out of the one piece of paper. And then with the large petals, I've created my rose. Okay. Okay, so I've created the rows there. Now these dies are rolling dies, the quilling flowers, but I don't quill them. Um, the reason why I don't quill them is um, my ha I, I, everyone knows I got I got funny hands. I got dodgy hands, arthritis, and I find the quilling quite hard. So what I do, I'll show you, is I do them as individual petals, and then I find I get more more shaping. But that's just me. But I can show you how. So you can see that's made out of rice papers. It's gorgeous. You can tie everything in with your project. So. What I've got here is I've got some of the petals, okay, in the large and the small, but I'll show you roughly. So I've cut them out and they come out in strips like this on my with my rice paper on. And then I've edged them with gold um, alchemy wax. And then all I do is I snip them off with a band that they're on. And it's just the way I it's just the way I like to do them because it's easier for me. Okay. So I've snipped them off, edged them with the gold, all right. So you can see on these ones, I have actually edged them with the gold. And then I cut, <laughs> I say a circle. <laughs> I'm embarrassed to call that a circle. I've cut a shape. <laughs> it's supposed to be a circle. <laughs> Sorry. Oh dear, yeah. Um, I've, I've cut a shape. I'm not going to say it's a circle. Actually, I cut two. I cut one small one, one small oval, and one sort of overly, overly circle. I don't know. So I, that's how I cut the bases. And then all I've done is I've popped some glue gel Okay, I pop some glue gel, blob in the middle, oh good old fashioned blob of glue gel, and then with the petal, I've shaped it around, I've broken down the fibres so at least I can work with it, so I break the fibres down first, and then I have shaped that, use your fingers or you can shape it over the end of your paintbrush, okay, so I've shaped that, and then all I do then is I work my way round, so I pop that one into there, Okay, and if I break this one down as well, pop it up there, I'll put the next one in, slightly overlapping, and then you just build your way around. It's just, I just find it's um easiest way for me, and I like the I like the way the finished rose, the uh, finished flower looks. But everyone does it differently, don't they? You know, I just do it, I also say, do it the way that you find most comfortable for you. See, so I bend it around there. There's always something that's going to be easy for other people, not so easy for yourselves. And you just always find your own way around it, don't you? Because what we do as crafters, we, we make it work for us, don't we? So that's how I do it. And I'm going to, it says, my pokey top, which we've lost. So we use the end of this again. And when I pop it down, squeeze it out, it just sort of pops them in where they're supposed to be. So I carry on then, you can see that then, I carry on building the rows. I'll do them the two different sizes. Let me get that one out of the way for you. Okay. 
So when you've got the two roses done, this is what they look like, okay? So that's just how I've built my roses and all edged with gold there, okay? So they're gonna be our embellishments. Maybe it's nice and easy to do. I'll pop them there out of the way for two seconds. Now, I've also created some leaves using um, another of the Desire sets. Uh, this one is assorted leaves. I've got to be honest, um, I use it, I do lose it a lot. I love this little mini leaf here and I'm just using these and those today. So I've popped them, what I've done is I've taken some cardstock and I've painted a six inch square in each colour to be honest. One of them will be purple and one in the green. I've let that dry and then I popped it through um, your die cutting machine to get my leaves and embossed it. And then I've edged using a, I use an ink blending tool. I've taken some of the um, mulberry purple and I've just edged around the leaves using my um, sponge dauber, can you see? I've edged around them. Just give a bit of contrast in your project. And then I, I like to bend mine um, in half um, to get some shape into them, okay? So I like to break down things and, and bend them up. So you just really, really quickly and easy bend these up. Sorry if that's beeping. Okay. So I just bend all these up. And again, with the little ones, the little one's cute, isn't they? Oh, um, again, you're getting perspective. You want large and you want small as well. Okay. So I'm going to pop that. Again, I've just done all the leaves the same. So they're really useful little sets. So, and when leaves are useful in anything. They're useful in stamps. They're useful in your dyes, useful in your stencils, they really are fantastic. You never, you always need a leaf, don't you? Always need. So we've got our leaves ready there, okay? What I also cut then is I did the mulberry card again and I used it to use a smaller leaf in the die set. So I've used a smaller uh, leaf here, okay? And I've cut it in the mulberry to give me some background colour because again white was just didn't need green and white was just too too stark for this project so we've got our embellishments ready there now okay I've also got if I haven't hidden it somewhere some fibres but we've I've lost them they've dropped on the floor somewhere so we're gonna go without fibres but I'm gonna put some fibres underneath because I've got to slot some in but don't worry about that so here I am working on the canvas. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to turn it upside down so you can see it the right way around now. Okay. So I've got my rose. Again, I'm going to pop some glue gel because we're working on quite a lot of different depths. It's going to be easier for me to set in. So I'm adding my flower there. Okay. Then what I'm going to do then is I'm going to pop a little bit of my glue gel on the base of my leaves and start slotting them in where I want them. And this is where I could really do with my own. Um, Pokey tool, but I'll use a paintbrush. There we go. So we're going to start building our design. Okay. I'm just using that to catch the edge. I want it to stick up. I want it to have some, some movement on that. So I'm just putting a nice blob again. You're not going to see this, all going to dry clear. This is my Cloud 3D glue gel. Okay. And I'm going to pop that in there. Okay. And I always like to add a little couple smaller ones in as well. So we're going to pop that in there. See, against there. Hopefully that'll stick on there. Okay, so you can see now we'll build our little design up in our corner. So we've got two, four there. Four, no good. Has to be five. <laughs> it's got to be an odd number. <laughs> All to do with triangles it is. The eye won't rest unless it's an odd number. And that's why you've got a triangle of things you've got somewhere to rest your eye if you're thinking about your projects okay so I've got my two four I've got five there there we go I'm quite I'm happy with that now then I've got um, my little rose I'm going to pop up in this corner again I'm using the three glue gel because of the texture on my there you go and again I'm going to use the leaves and I'm going to oops got a finger in it <laughs> oh, the thing about the gel doesn't it? get fingers in it everywhere so I'm just going to pop that coming down there. Got another one here then. I'm just going to pop that. I might put it up here somewhere. Doesn't matter if it's coming off the off there. And I'm going to add a smaller one down here. 
and that's my three leaves on there okay now we've got these little pieces left then okay so i've got these gorgeous little um pieces here again the tiny little blob on the end of there because i want these two again because it's glue gel you can still lift things around because nothing's dried yet so you can if you're never happy with the position at least with your glue gel you can uh, reposition it any time okay so i'm just popping these wherever Wherever the mood takes me, I should pop them there. Okay. Because I could slide them underneath. But because they're quite delicate, I think they just need a little blob of glue on the end themselves. Okay. And I can lift that up because I can. It's not glued down. Okay. And then I could put a bit coming onto there. There we go. So you just, I'm just building my little design. One, two, three. No, I think we'll do that. Okay. There we go. There's a leaf there. Okay. On the original one, I've also added little leaves onto the front there as well. Okay, so if you can see there, really, really quite easy and quick and easy to do. With those lovely little dies, using your rice paper to create your flowers, using your paints to create your colours for your die cuts. We've used a gorgeous rice paper as our topper. We've used the um, soft blend paints for our backgrounds. We've used the um, starlight texture paste as well i will show you the colors before we go anywhere i've used this gorgeous and i love these this is fresh flourish is one of our newer sets in our magic cuts and they are fabulous i really like them and we've used again we use the mulberry and we use the waxes on here as well so a couple of little techniques we've got a lot gorgeous stencil in the background as well so i'm hoping i've shown you a, you know something pretty to do and you could do it as a journal cover thank you erica thank you sheila you could do as a journal cover, you could do as a top of a box. Imagine giving this as a box as a present, having that way and that's the lid of your box and you can give that as a gift. It'd be absolutely stunning, that would be. So we just take you through the products before we do our giveaway. Um, so I'm going to take through what we've actually used. Okay, here we go. There we go, we've used all these today. <laughs> okay, so very, very quickly. I have used the Soft Bend Fabric Paints and I have used the Mulberry Purple I've used the white, okay, so I've used the mulberry purple, I've used the white, I've used the um, ashy rose, yep, and I've used the um, sage green in the paints. I've also used the gorgeous starlight texture paint in the gold. Okay. We've used the alchemy wax there, and we've used that, and that's the Inca gold. Okay, gorgeous colour. Let me show you that. I don't know why I show you the lid. You can't see the colour if I show you the lid. <laughs> okay, there you go. I've used our uh, the Magic Bond glue and I've used the Kalal 3D gel. I can't even say it. Gel. <laughs> 3D gel. Okay. And I have actually really enjoyed using um, these two sets of dies um, that um, crafters um, um, let me have a play with. So these are the quilling dies, but again, I've used them individual petals, and these are really, really useful um, with these sorted leaves. So anything like that is really useful to have in your stash. And of course, I can't go anywhere without saying my gorgeous um, trellis stencil as well, okay. Right then, let's put the camera up for you now. Hey. Oh, she said, that's a shock for you, isn't it? <laughs> a shock for you, me coming in like that. Right then, I've got the giveaway to do. You have to bear with me now, okay, because I am going to go and I'm just whizzing through everything and I'm going up and down, really I should uh, hopefully get you, I've got it on the tablet here, I want you to see me doing this, okay, so there I am, oh excuse the mess, <laughs> everything's in the mess, so I'm going to go up and down these, okay, up and down, up and down, there's up and down, okay, up and down, I'm just going up and down, okay, and I'm not going to look now, and wherever my finger stops, she says, once I get off the live screen, <laughs> she says, it's going to be, I'm not looking, it's there, and it is Sue Hare. Congratulations, Sue. Sue Hare's won our great little um, giveaway there. So, Sue, if you'd like to do me a personal message with your contact details, then I can get them sent to you tomorrow or the day after. What day are we on? Oh no, tomorrow, Monday. I get them off to you straight in the post, okay? And then, ooh, 
I'm going to give you a sneak peek of next week, am I? Right, I've only just started playing with this, but it was asked, I did say next week it'd be Starlight Paws. So we're going to do Starlight Paw next week. This is just something I was doing quickly last night. I haven't finished it yet, but I don't know if I want to start it again. But this, I was, it's the colours I'm wanting, is an acrylic Starlight Paw. And if you can see, can you see the shimmer? Can you see the shimmer from our Starlight? And I started adding in dots and all sorts. So we will be playing, doing our acrylic paw next sunday at seven okay so there you go so that's a hint again someone asked for it you got it okay <laughs> so i hope you've enjoyed it thanks ever so much for joining me i've had a great time as normal um well done sue for getting the stamps and the giveaway okay so i hope you've had a lovely weekend have a great week next week and i'm going to see you next sunday at seven so i'll say ciao